The committee this morning welcomes Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff General Martin Dempsey for our hearing on the Department of Defense's fiscal year 2013 budget request, the associated future year's defense program, and the posture of the United States Armed Forces. Your testimony today marks the beginning of the committee's review of the FY13 budget request for the Department of Defense. This year's request includes $525 billion for the base budget and $88.4 billion for overseas contingency operations, so-called OCO. The FY13 base budget request is $5 billion less than the FY12 enacted level of $530 billion, and the OCO request is $27 billion less than last year's enacted level of $115 billion. The FY13 base budget request conforms with the Budget Control Act that Congress passed last summer. The Senate approved the Budget Control Act on a bipartisan basis with 74 senators voting for it. The Budget Control Act locked in defense and non-defense discretionary spending caps over 10 years. The defense caps reduced projected defense spending by nearly half a trillion dollars over 10 years, and the department responded with a new strategy and a new program to meet the nation's security challenges and preserve our military capabilities. The Budget Control Act also included language requiring the Congress to pass legislation with additional far-reaching deficit reduction. If Congress does not come up with a deficit reduction package by next January, one that locks in another $1.2 trillion in deficit reduction over 10 years, then automatic spending cuts called sequestration will be imposed on both defense and non-defense programs. The budget the President sent us yesterday avoids sequestration by meeting the $1.2 trillion additional defense reduction target approximately one-half in further cuts in spending and one-half in additional revenues. The defense budget request for FY 2013 not only conforms to the funding limits of the congressionally mandated Budget Control Act, it also reflects the results of the Department's comprehensive and inclusive strategic review <laughs> initiated by President Obama in April last year and the strategic guidance that resulted. The fiscal year 2013 defense budget request reflects the continuing conflict in Afghanistan, but also reflects the fact that the process of transition has begun and continues apace. Afghan security forces are assuming responsibility for securing the Afghan people in more and more areas throughout Afghanistan. Progress on security is real. The second round of areas to be transitioned to an Afghan security lead will be completed later this year. Then approximately 50% of the Afghan population will live in areas where Afghan security forces have the lead for providing security with coalition forces playing a supporting role. I have long pressed for Afghan security forces to move increasingly into the combat lead and to assume responsibility for securing more and more Afghan territory and communities as the size and capabilities of the Afghan army and police are built up. The success of our mission in Afghanistan depends on getting the Afghan security forces in the lead with the support of the, of the Afghan people, thereby putting the lie to the Taliban propaganda that the coalition is an occupying force. The Afghan foreign ministry spokesman recently made clear there was full agreement on transition, saying, quote, we have always maintained that Afghan security is an Afghan responsibility, close quote. Last June, President Obama said that the 33,000 U.S. surge force would be removed from Afghanistan by the end of this summer. That means that 68,000 U.S. troops would remain in Afghanistan after the drawdown of the surge. He also said that after the reduction of the U.S. surge force, U.S. troops will continue to draw down, quote, at a steady pace, close quote. Yet the FY13 Overseas Contingency Operations budget request 
now before Congress is based on an assumption that there are no additional reductions in the 68,000 troop level in Afghanistan throughout all of FY13. The question that I hope our witnesses will address this morning <clears throat> is whether they expect further reductions in U.S. troop levels in Afghanistan during FY13 below 68,000 and what associated cost savings would result. If that decision has not yet been made by the President, what is the timetable for its being made? I also hope Secretary Panetta will clarify his surprising statements earlier this month that, quote, our goal is to complete all of the transition to a training advisory and assistance role in 2013, close quote, and that, quote, he said, hopefully by mid to the latter part of 2000, of 13, 2013, we will be able to make a transition from a combat role, close quote. <clears throat> there are many reports about reconciliation talks with the Taliban. If Taliban statements are true that they will open a political office in Qatar, it would have the potential to be a positive development. I am concerned, however, by reports that in exchange for the opening of this office, the administration is considering transferring five Afghan Taliban detainees from the Guantanamo detention facility to Qatar. Such a significant step strikes me as premature and should be considered, in my view, only following positive discussions and not preceding them. Another concern I have regarding the progress of the reconciliation talks is the reported decision by the government of Afghanistan to open a second channel in the dialogue with the Taliban, that would be in Saudi Arabia. It seems to me that this would create the potential for confusion. The United States has said it is committed to an Afghan-led reconciliation process. That is another reason that the discussion process ought to be pursued through a single channel with both the Afghan government and us fully coordinated and participating together whether it takes place in one or two venues. 